Hello and welcome to The Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Egan and in advance of spring calving season 2021, I'm joined by Chagas nutritionist Joe Patton to find out how to manage cow nutrition in the crucial weeks pre and post calving. I first asked Joe, what kind of problems arise every spring? Problems every spring, I suppose there's... We're all well aware of them, I suppose, as cow health issues, calving difficulty issues, um, and and calf health issues as well. So it's those difficult calvings and problems that arise after that, maybe health cleanings, that kind of stuff. And obviously then your your calves as well, I suppose, the um, scours, et cetera, et cetera, which is really the health of the calf too. And that can be affected by the nutrition of the dam in the in the, in the late uh, pregnancy period. So while there are issues, obviously, with facilities and with, with, with hygiene and cleanliness, particularly around calf scours, I suppose if we, if we, if we focus on having the, the cow well-fed and healthy uh, going into the calving event, I suppose um, we can help to improve the health of the of the calf and the cow as well. So there's a few things we could probably look at there. And obviously, cow condition, particularly the body condition score of the cow, is important in relating to these issues. What kind of targets do farmers need to be hitting? It is important. And look, at, I would say that you know certainly over the years, um, dealing dealing maybe a lot more even with the, with the dairy guys. It's body condition is very very simple, Catherine. It's not. There's no big magic in it. Um, but it's still, it's a very, very important, uh, it's a very important management tool. And it's as simple really as putting your hand on the, putting your hand on the animal and having a look and seeing where you're, where you're at. So I suppose the, the, the general rule, without getting into too much in terms of the figures on it, but I suppose a condition score of sort of 2.5, 2.75 is kind of what we'd be targeting for our kind of our spring calvers. So that translates into really, I suppose, calling it kind of fit, but not fat, I suppose. So what we're really saying there is kind of good, decent cover over the short ribs, decent cover on the on 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 the long ribs, kind of you know a kind of a smooth top line really, uh, and a bit of cover at the tail head, but not too much. I think what I'd always be saying to fellas is, if you're looking for under conditioning, you're looking at it kind of on the on the short ribs. If you're looking for over conditioning, you're looking for it at the tail head. If you get me, so kind of a bit of cover on the tail head, but not too much, which means they're not too heavy. Uh, but certainly, you want plenty of cover across the short ribs on the on the on the top line as well. So fit, but not fat, sort of two point seven five there thereabouts, two point five, two point seven five for your spring calving cow, which gives her you know not in, not over conditioned that there's going to be issues with calving, but not under conditioned that maybe colostrum quality and milk yield after calving uh, will be under pressure. So that middle ground is really what we're targeting, you know. And overall, cows were in good condition at housing this year, but during the period now coming up in the next eight to ten weeks pre-calving, what nutrition should cows be receiving? Yeah, that's a good question. I suppose that we can look at that sort of really in two ways. You could say you can look at it basically what, you know, it's really what you're looking for here is energy, protein and minerals, Catherine. But that will obviously translate into a certain quality of silage for the great majority of farms. Right. So really what we're talking about is a maintenance kind of a maintenance type diet with a little bit extra to feed the calf. So that's relatively simple to achieve for your suckler cows if they're in if they're in good you know if they're in good condition. If you're really you're really talking about something that's something in the region of sort of 65, 67 DMD silage, uh, clean, good quality, you know, well preserved silage at that rate, sort of 65 to 67 DMD silage will do as and really kind of fed to appetite, I suppose, um, would be what we would be talking about or close to appetite. So they're going to eat, you know, they're going to eat nine, I suppose nine kilos dry matter or something like that or in and depending on the size of the cow obviously but in and around that level uh, the 65 67 dmd fed to appetite is really what we'd be talking about now i know there's to be talk about feed restriction and restricting the energy intake on, on on cows and all the rest of it but what we'd be sort of saying there is that you know that type of silage is pretty ordinary now in, in real terms you know you wouldn't want to be feeding it to weanlands you wouldn't want to be feeding it to growing cattle so it's almost like the, the restriction is built into that silage, if you get me, because the energy content of it is quite low. So you're sort of really talking ad lib of that type of material will probably get you will probably get you over the line. Now there is a thing to say, I suppose, too, that 
you know, we've seen a fair bit of this too, maybe in, in certain, in, from certain farms where silage quality is very, very poor, maybe down at 60 or under, like, which is kind of, un, it's below the level really where the cow needs to be, particularly in the last month before calving. So in that situation where we're talking about very poor quality silage and maybe cows under a bit of pressure, there may be a benefit then of maybe coming in with maybe a kilo, kilo and a half, maybe uh, in, in the last few days, you know, the last few days before the cow calves down, just to boost them up a little bit in energy but again that's really more to do with very poor quality silage rather than everybody needing to do that. You touched on it there Joe, advisors often get a lot of queries with regard to restricting feed pre-calving, what kind of impact can that actually have? For, for restricted feed pre-calving, that all I suppose it all depends on um, it depends on the body condition. Um, it, it depends on the body condition, I suppose, of the cow catcher, and it also depends on I suppose the quality, you know, the quality of the silage that we're talking about. Certainly, um, if we're in a situation where our silage is kind of heading towards maybe seventy or a bit over. There is an opportunity maybe to sort of restrict silage there um, to maybe something like 80, 85 percent of the ad lib intake, right? Now, that feed restriction is really to stop cows getting over conditioned, essentially. So it's that the silage quality is a bit better than the cows need. There's an opportunity maybe to restrict their silage if that's the case. Um, look at if it's kind of poor quality stuff, maybe, as I said, the energy content of that is so low that you probably have the feed restriction kind of built into the, you know, you have to sort of have it built into the, um, uh, to, 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 to the silage almost itself. So based by the virtue of the fact that silage is low in energy, it's probably doing the restriction for you, if you get me. But like, we would be sort of saying, look at that there's, there's a, there's, a, there's a possibility, like if cows are in very good shape, you know, if they're already in good shape, I mean, if they're kind of condition score three and over, there is a p potential maybe to sort of restrict the cow in the dry period by that she's kind of maybe a unit of energy or thereabouts, um, below what her requirements are. So you could probably lose a little bit of weight on your better conditioned cows. You know, cows that are maybe already over three, if they calve down maybe a 275 or so, there's a you can maybe make a bit of a feed saving by by feed restriction. But it's something really that is really down to you know, if silage quality is decent and the cows are in good shape, there's potential to have a moderate saving on silage by by bit of feed restriction. But if if cows are in poor shape and silage quality isn't hectic to begin with, there it's it's probably not where we need to be going. Do you know what I mean? It's probably we probably just need to make we need to be looking really at the body condition of the cow and making sure she calves in a decent condition uh, for calving down. That's the that's the real decision maker. You know. So again, just to summarise that. If you think they're in good shape and your silage is decent, you could probably restrict them a little bit, allow for a little bit of loss during the dry period. But if the cows are already under pressure for a bit of condition, we'd probably want to be feeding them. We'd want to be feeding them on. You know, another question maybe, and maybe you'll tell me um, tell me different. But I think some a question probably too that comes in is the is the question on the calf weight. Would that be some? I suppose that's something that we probably need to mention as well. That you know, if we if we feed restrict cows heavily. Uh, will it have a big effect on on you know is it a way to sort of um sort of make sure the calf isn't too heavy you know that's kind of an idea really the work from grange would say that on mature cows you know basically if you restrict them that they'd lose 30 kilos of weight or 50 kilos of weight it doesn't have much of an effect on the on the on the calving uh, the calf size at all uh, actually it's, it's it's surprising maybe some people might think that you can you sort of make it easier calving by heavily restricting them but it doesn't it doesn't really work that way maybe with heifers certainly with first calved heifers i wouldn't be doing too much restriction on them you may have an effect on the calf and the heifer but not in the cow yeah, the size of the calf would be more related to the genetics, most likely. Yeah, I think so. So, like, I don't think we shouldn't be using very heavy, you know, if we're using very, you know, very heavy terminal sires kind of thing, and that we shouldn't be expecting miracles by by really putting the cow on a sort of a very tight ration pre-calving. It won't have a major effect on the um, on the calf size. And in fact, if you strip too much condition off the cow by trying to do it, uh, and put the cow into a very sort of negative state of nutrition, you'd probably do more harm than good, actually. And there are countless testimonials from farmers that have had issues that you mentioned earlier on in relation to using pre calving minerals, which had helped to solve the problem. Are pre calving minerals essential for all herds, do you think? I think they probably are, you know, that, um, like, what are we talking about doing here? We're talking about a cow that has to calve, drop a sort of a, 
you know, it, 45, you know, depending on the breed, obviously, so average maybe 45 or over kilos calf. That's a fair demand on energy and it's a fair demand on minerals too, actually. The cow has to recover, produce colostrum of good quality and then start producing milk to feed this calf. So I don't think minerals is a big ask to, to you know, 100 grams a day of a good mineral for a few weeks pre-calving is not something that's, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to break the bank in terms of feed cost, but it's going to probably make a big difference in terms of your cow health and your veterinary cost. Now, I would say, Catherine, on that, that what we want to be doing there is meeting the animal's requirements. Uh, there's no point in putting in all sorts of fancy, you know, fancy minerals and spending over too much money on them. A good standard of a dry cow mineral uh, for probably certainly sort of five weeks or so there for starting about five weeks to six weeks pre-calving running that into running that into calving is a good is a good idea i think it does help uh, it does help just get the overall health of the, of the cow and the calf into line you know yeah you mentioned there there is a huge amount of minerals for sale what kind of a speck of a mineral do cows need or what should farmers be asking the feed merchants yeah look that's a good that's a good question minerals is a bit of a it's a bit it can be a bit daunting when you see all these figures and a bit you know there's all there's all different things and you're into milligrams and grams and percentages and all this and it does kind of it does start to get a bit sort of you know you'd, you'd have to you'd have to sit and think about it a little bit but all i would be saying is this right that just make sure that it's a dry cow mineral spec that you're feeding. A good, you know, a good dry cow mineral from a reputable source. Um, I've seen actually over the last couple of weeks, a couple of farmers and a couple of advisors coming forward with minerals and saying, well, what do you think of this kind of a thing? I'm going to feed this mineral as a, you know, or my client was looking at this mineral as, a, as a, um, an option. And the mineral's not been suitable at all for for dry cows, you know, because they're just formulated not to the right not to the right spec. Just make sure you have a good standard dry cow mineral. So what do we really mean in there? It probably needs a bit of phosphorus in it. Certainly magnesium. I know magnesium. We've been pushing very strongly on the dairy side to get people to feed more mag pre-calving because it does help with you know improving calving difficulty and that kind of stuff. So maybe 15% magnesium, 20% magnesium. 15% should be fine for for a suckler cow. I would have thought a bit of phosphorus in it. So those are your big chunky minerals, if you like. They need to be fed in grams per day. So that effectively means you have to dust them on the silage or feed them in the water. But generally speaking, it'll be dusting them on the silage. Those are your big minerals. Then you come then and you have your trace minerals, which differ slightly because they're needed in very small quantities. That's milligrams per day. So like, you know, it's essentially less than a spoonful of the total amount of those. So it's very, very small. Uh, that would be selenium, iodine, copper, cobalt, manganese, zinc, those type of minerals. They're, as I say, milligrams per day. So in theory, like you could do those as a bolus, for example, because they're so small, but you're going to have to be feeding, I would say there's a benefit to feeding a bit of mag and phosphorus anyway. So therefore, it might be just easier to, um, to just buy a, a bag mineral that has all of those things included and dust it on the silage at sort of your 100 gram rate per day per cow something like that might be good obviously just not to forget to mention it too there'll be vitamins too in the in the bag minerals so vitamin e vitamin which is good for immunity vitamin d and vitamin e as well so a, a good standard mineral that delivers you know decent amounts of the, the trace minerals plus your mag and phosphorus and i think you're well on the way down 100 grams of that per day for about sort of five six weeks pre-calving i think it's well well worth it you know Finally, Joe, what three tips would you have for farmers in relation to nutrition post calving where cows will be housed indoors and maybe start calving at the end of January or the early days of February? Yeah, so you're saying really they're, they're going to spend a bit of time inside um, and they need, so really what we're looking at there is, I suppose, is just trying to make sure the cow has enough decent quality, um, decent quality energy and protein to have a decent amount of, you know, good quality milk for the, for the growing calf. Um, again, look at the big thing there, Catherine, is body condition and um, and silage quality. So, do you know your silage quality first of all? It keeps it. I seem to be beating that drum a lot on these on these things, but I think it's very very important. It's because it really determines what you need to do with feeding, uh, and then obviously your body condition as well. So, if we take knowing those two things is the big is the big part of it. So, let's take for example with good quality silage, and um, let's say seventy plus DMD silage. Uh, and we're feeding fresh decaf cows, assuming they're going to be inside for a bit. Uh, you're probably talking you're probably talking a couple of kilos of a decent quality ration for those. So maybe two kilos of a decent quality uh, concentrate for those, right? That's kind of like, um, 
kind of like a 16 a 16 percent uh, good quality ration for those if your silage is kind of poor quality you're probably going um a little bit more than that so you're probably more an extra key up to an extra kilo so maybe a little under two kilos on the good silage and probably closer to two and a half kilos if the silage is more like 66. So the tip there might be the dry cow bales are good for the dry cows. If you have some, you should have some better quality bales available uh, for your milk, for your milking cows or your calved cows, I suppose, your, your, you know, your freshly calved cows. Um, so yeah, you, you want, you, you probably need two types of silage if that's the case. So the silage that's doing your weanlands maybe or that's doing your growing cattle would probably be, would need to be you know, would need to be fed to the cows with the calf at foot kind of thing. Uh, so having a bit of that quality silage, if you don't, you're probably talking close to a kilo of additional uh, concentrate. And just really, I suppose, the other big tip is just have a look, you know, even if you're not sure about it, talk to you, maybe your advisor or, you know, somebody in your group or whatever that you trust, have a look at your cows in the next, you know, it's a quiet time of the year. Have a look at your cows, put your hand on them, make your decision based on your on your body condition then and see, you know, see where you're at in terms of uh, body condition before calving and see, you know, is feed restriction actually a good idea or not, depending on the level of fat cover that's on them at the moment. I think those are the those are the main things I would be looking out for, you know. Most definitely. And there is still plenty of time, depending on the calving date, to yeah, sure. rectify a lot of these issues. Sure. Thanks, Joe, for joining me on the show not at all Catherine anytime okay that's all for this week's episode and my thanks to Joe for joining me on the show you can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie or you can listen on Apple and Google podcasts as well as Spotify don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss a show for all other updates from our Beef programme keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages until next time I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening